close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And as for any sounds or thoughts that may disturb the mind for the time being, just let them go. They can be there, but they don't have to disturb your stillness. Think of them just floating through. Like dark matter. They say dark matter doesn't interact with regular matter. So think of the thoughts not interacting with you, and you don't interact with the thoughts. And John Cha says sometimes we think that noises are disturbing us, but actually we're disturbing the noise. We're the ones who are making the comments on it. So the noise can just do its thing. But you can keep your focus right here and try to make the breath as comfortable as you can so it becomes interesting. How you breathe is going to have an impact on the health of the body. And the health of the body, of course, is going to have an impact on how easy it is for the mind to settle down. So take an interest in this. How can you breathe in a way that feels really good? Let this be absorbing. We're all too absorbed with our thoughts. Every little thing that comes into the mind. We take it and we see how far we can dress it into a complete thought. And some of these little kernels of thoughts are really not worth going with at all. We need to learn how, some, how to learn to have some quality control about what we bring into the mind and what we put out. It's like a factory. They want to be very sure that they got only the best ingredients for whatever it is they're going to make. And they want to make sure that whatever comes out of the factory maintains the good name of the factory. So there's got to be quality control both coming in and going out. And being with the breath can put you in a good place for that, because you're right here in the present moment, right where things come in and right where things go out. If something's going to come out of the mind into the body, it's going to have to go through the breath. Any impact of the body and the mind has to go through the breath. So you're at the crossroads right here. And then you can regulate the traffic. Make sure only good things come in, good things go out. And that way you're in more control of your life. They compare meditation to being in a house, making it your home. If the mind that doesn't meditate is like a bus station, anybody can come in, anybody can go out. All kinds of things are happening in the bus station because there's no control. But when you have your own home, you have doors and windows that you can open and close. And you can clean out the house and not be afraid that other people are going to come and make a mess. As long as you make sure you're not a mess, then you're fine. So sit here with a sense of well-being. You've made merit, you've made, it, you've made gifts of generosity, you're practicing the precepts. These are all things to be happy about. Then you take that sense of well-being, and you use it to develop the mind. And John Fung would call this taking the profits of your early investments and reinvesting them, so you get higher profits. The goodness of virtue, the goodness of generosity. Lift the quality of the mind. And then from that lifted quality of the mind, then you can get the mind to develop. So it can get more and more precise in how it doesn't create disturbances for itself, doesn't create disturbances for people outside. There's so much turmoil going on in the world. You want to make sure you don't add anything to the turmoil. And this is where you start, by getting the mind to be peaceful right here with the breath, taking an interest in the breath. I'm finding that you learn a lot about the body, you learn about, a lot about the mind as you do this.